The Visitation of the Gods by Gilda Cordero Fernando Author's Background Gilda Cordero Fernando was a Filipino writer, visual artist, fashion designer, and publisher. She was born on June 4, 1930 in Manila and died on August 27, 2020 at the age of 90. She had her Bachelor of Arts at St. Teresa's College, Manila and Master of Arts in Ateneo, Manila University. Cordero Fernando's early literary career from 1952 to 1970 focused mostly on short fiction. Some of these were published in two collections of short stories, The Butcher, The Baker, and The Candlestick Maker in 1962 and A Wilderness of Sweets in 1973. In 1970s, Cordero Fernando shifted her focus towards nonfiction work and publishing. Another book, Philippine Food and Life, was published in 1992 with Alfredo Rosas. She also worked on Filipino heritage, a 10-volume study on Philippine history and culture published by Lahing Filipino in 1978. Afterwards, she founded GCF Books, which published a dozen titles that deal with various aspects of Filipino culture and society. In 1990s, Cordero Fernando shifted from books to a number of other artistic roles, including that of visual artist, fashion designer, playwright, art curator, and producer. In February 2000, she produced Luna, Ang Aswang Romance. Cordero Fernando has won the Carlos Palanca Memorial Award numerous times and was bestowed its Gawadangalang Lahi in 2014. She was the Patnubay ng Sining Awardee for Literature during the 1993 Araw ng Maynila. And she was the Cultural Center of the Philippines Gawad Awardee for Literature and Publishing in 1994. The Ateneo de Manila University awarded her its Gawad ng Lao ng Lahi in 2008. These are the characters in The Visiting of the Gods. Miss Noel, an English instructor. Mr. Sawit, new English supervisor. Mr. Albes, Pugad Lawin's principal. Mrs. Albes, wife of the principal. Mr. Alava, superintendent. Mrs. Beneflor, Industrial Arts Instructor Leon, Student Mrs. Divina Gracia, HE Instructor Mr. De Jos, Physics Instructor Ms. Santos, PE Instructor Mr. Del Rosario, Military Tactics Mr. Baz, National Language Instructor The story took place in Pugalawin High School. It was rooted on the firm ledge of a hill. The schoolhouse was accessible by a series of stone steps carved on the hard face of the rocks. Its west windows locked on the misty grandeur of a mountain shaped like a sleeping woman. The story was narrated with the third person point of view. The exposition of the story. The letter announcing the visitation, a yearly descent upon a school by the superintendent, the district supervisors, and the division supervisors for purposes of inspection and evaluation, had been delivered in the morning by a sleepy janitor to the principal. The party was the attached circular revealed a hurried glance now at Pagkabuhay would be in Mapili by lunchtime and bearing typhoons, floods, volcanic eruptions, and other acts of God would be upon Pugadlawin by afternoon. 
Rising Action The teaching staff and student body had been divided into four working groups. The first group composed of Mrs. Divina Grecia, the harassed home economics instructor. Group 2 teachers had been assigned to procure the beddings and dishes to be used for supper. Structuring the rooms was the responsibility of the third group, and the rowdiest freshman boys composed the fourth and discriminated group under the stewardship of Miss Noel. Conflict The internal conflict exists in the form of a tussle between the ideals of Miss Noel as a teacher and her low profile, but discernible ambition as a young person. The external conflict exists at various levels as to the conflicts between the aspirations of the teachers and the principal's shrewdness. The conflict between the teachers enhanced by their desire to seek favors from the officials. The conflict between the perception of Mr. Sawit and Ms. Noel as to teaching and education. Climax Mr. Sawit asked Ms. Noel her opinion regarding the visitation. She answered with her frank opinion that everything was all for us. The visitation was announced a whole month ahead. They clean the schoolhouse and bring out their best manners. They rehearse their classes and roll out the red carpet. The supervisors are aware of this and they know that the teachers also know that they know. This defeats the purpose of this activity. It gives an opportunity for teachers and staff to hide weaknesses of the school. This boils down to make an impression and satisfying a group of assessors who are treated like gods by flattery and gift giving. Falling action. Ms. Noel realized that those who sacrifice and dedicate their lives for the good of the country usually end up getting nothing and having nothing. It seems that all those years she had been a slave of the administration. In the end, it's always the children who will suffer. Resolution At the end of the story, Miss Noel's determination to teach students still is in her heart. After breakfast the next morning, the supervisors packed their belongings and were soon ready. Mr. Beneflor fetched a camera and they all posed in a sunny steps for a souvenir photo. The superintendent with Mr. and Mrs. Albus on either side of him and the minor gods in descending order on the home economic stairs. Ms. Noel was late, but she ran to take her place with pride and humility on the lowest rung of the school's hierarchy. The theme of the story the Filipino's mentality towards competition. Sometimes, one's pursuit of personal and professional growth can be mistaken a threat to another man's job or authority.